Good morning, minions. Today, we are going to take lessons in how to take over the world of Warcraft. I mean, Summoner's War. Um, so, today's video is just going to basically be um, directed towards beginner and challenger level players. Um, basically, don't make new mistakes like I made when I was back on those levels. Uh, and I'm going to attempt to give you, pass along some advice that will help you guys not make the same mistakes that I made at those time periods. So, first and foremost, um, at least in my opinion, one of the most important things you guys can do is building up your glory buildings. Glory buildings make a lot of difference in the game, and building them up in the correct order can make a lot of difference. And since you're at the beginning, Getting it right in the beginning will help out much later on down the road, so you're not like me, who should be probably a C, or sorry, a Guardian 1, Guardian 2 level player, but I'm stuck in Conqueror. Uh, because in the beginning, I messed up a lot of stuff. So, first things, first things for, uh, for advice. Number one, as far as Arena goes, set your defense to being that level 1, you know, 1 star OP slime. Especially if you have a dark slime, because they're kind of cute looking. Um, that way, you can farm other people, they'll farm you, your rank will stay low, it's easy, you're going to be getting 3 glory points per fight, probably take you like 30 seconds maximum. Um, and this way you can start to build up your glory points. Now, important things to buy with these glory points uh, in the beginning. Number one, Devilmon. Devilmon are one of the rarest resources in this whole game. Um, you will have difficulty powering up Nat 4s and Nat 5s without Devilmon. Uh, so I recommend the first thing you purchase every week is purchase a Devilmon. Uh, please, for the love of God, do not use them on 3 stars. Um, use them on 4 stars if you really need it for advancement in the Kairos dungeons. Um... You know, obviously on five stars, but not on three stars, please. I've seen people do that. Um, number two <clears throat> would be the Energy Sanctum. Um, it doesn't seem like a whole lot. You get plus ten uh, energy um, when you max it out, but this actually makes a lot of difference when you're actually doing crystal refreshes later on. Um, I'll put some stats up here. You know, say like if I did. 10 or 100 crystal refreshes, how much extra energy I get in the long run uh, from having my energy sanctum maxed. Um, next one would be the mysterious plant. Um, your speed production is 30% faster. If I remember right, when you don't have it maxed, it's like 5 or 6 minutes per energy. If you have it maxed, it's like 3.5 minutes per energy, which you know means you fill up a lot faster per hour uh, while you're playing. More energy equals more runs. Um, and the next most important would be the Sky Tribe Totem. When you're in the beginning of this game, you don't understand necessarily and doesn't really show you so much um, that speed is the most overpowered stat in the whole game. So getting your Sky Tribe Totem up, um, even though it's only 15% at max level, um, every extra bit of speed you have will help you in both PvE and PvP. So it's pretty important to start working on this one early. I actually did not start working on this one until I was pretty much working on like Dragons B10. And I always wondered why my teams didn't work out so well. Especially because I'd, you know, I'd hop on YouTube and YouTube would it was both helpful and bad because I understood more the mechanics from watching YouTube. Then I'd see these teams where it'd be like, hey, look, this guy's running Giants B10, Dragons B10, whatever. And I've got all those exact monsters. And my totems weren't, you know, these glory buildings weren't, you know, as high as that player's. Uh, nor was my rune quality as good as theirs. And I'm sitting there wondering why I've got like a 50 to 70%, you know, completion rate. Um, which is, you know, pretty horrendous. So those uh, buildings can make a lot of difference. 
um, especially um, the uh, sky to sky trap totem. Um, so that's the basics on what you should buy with your glory points. Remember, double mon first. Uh, your energy buildings next, and then start working on your speed one. Um, and those will profit you quite a bit when, you know, you're at beginning and challenge your level. Um, next thing would be uh, a farming monster is always a good thing. Um, there are tons of farming monsters that you can get in the beginning of the game. Three star, two star. If you're lucky enough to get a good four star one, um, I per so you could check those out on Reddit. I personally used these two monsters myself. Uh, where are you? There we go. Uh, Dagora. I used Dagora on uh, Famon One for a very, very, very long time. Um, Dagora is easy to skill up. Um, and actually pretty easy to ruin. Uh, Ramagos, the other, uh, the wind war bear, is also a possibility for uh, beginning level players. Where'd you go? There you go. Ramagos. Um, and I used Ramagos in uh, Mount White, Rangoon. Um, I'm pretty sure that I used to use him... I used to use him on 4, 6, and 7, depending, um, for leveling other monsters. But it is not important at this point in the game, this is an important thing to stress, that you 6-star this monster. It's better just to get good runes on them. Um, like, 5-star would be fine, 6-star is kind of overkill. Um, how an easy way to get good runes would be to go to Garen Forest, um, uh, and run hollows over and over and over again. Try and see if you can pick up four and five star runes um, for your farmer. Um, but at this point, it's not incredibly important to make your farmer the best farmer ever. It's actually still more important to try and grab good runes. Uh, that so the, the next that takes us to the next area, which would be uh, Kairos Dungeon. Please don't be like me. When I first started this game, I thought it was an RPG. Um, which is weird that I suddenly, that I actually got addicted to it later on. Um, but Kairos Dungeon is where you will get the best runes. And you want to start with giants, ignore dragons, ignore necropolis. Um, you want to start here in giants. You need to actually do giants anyway as part of your daily quests. And I always recommend doing your daily quests, especially once you've, uh, maxed out your energy sanctum. Um... Because you know, overall, if you do it the correct way, uh, you will uh, actually gain energy and gain crystals overall. Um, so, put together whatever team you can for these lower levels. Uh, usually, you know, make sure your element advantage is good, except for, you know, against the dark giant here. Because, you know, you're probably not going to have the late monsters. And he, he'll have the advantage on you too, so... But it is better in Kairos Dungeons to have a good completion rate than to be doing a higher level. Like, if you can complete B3, like, 90-95% of the time, you can beat B4, but you can only beat B4 maybe 60-75% to 75 of the time. It's better just to stick on B3 until you've got the monsters and the runes to go ahead and advance. Uh, for a long time... When I first started, I was actually lucky enough to summon a lot of good fire monsters, but this hurt my progression in giants because I was able to beat B10, but I couldn't do it regularly because mostly fire monsters, runes weren't good enough. Looking at YouTube videos of other people um, beating giants B10 saying, hey, I've got some of those monsters, I can do this, and I couldn't. Um, so... I eventually realized all these things, and I just played at B8 for a couple months um, until I was able to get together some monsters and a lot better runes, and then I was able to start tackling B10. I didn't do B9 because my monsters, um, I didn't have enough good water monsters at the time. I was really fire overbalanced in the beginning, um, 
but don't be like me. It was very, 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 it, you know, it's very important to start tackling Kairos Dungeon as early as possible. Um, because then you'll start getting the rude grades you need. Um, and you won't be like me, where, you know, stuck in C2, C3, when I should probably be a G1, G2 player. Um, so, keeping runes. Um, number one, flat stat runes that um, are on your even slots, 2, 4, and 6. Just sell them. Um, it is better to have a 3-star percentage rune in one of those slots than it is to have a 4 or 5 star flat stat um, ultimately especially once you do get to the point of making 6 star monsters um, so make sure that you know those are obviously you're going to want percentage runes um, on 1, 3, and 5 your odd slot runes they're always going to be flat stats so you're looking for substats in those uh, and substats are actually really really important you're not going to notice it so much when you're in the beginning because you're, you know, one through three star runes, the the substats are pretty low, but they do make up a difference. Um, most monsters can be categorized into two different types. They're attackers or they're supporters. Um, attackers are, you're going to be looking for things like crit rate, um, crit damage, attack, speed, um, so on those one three fives, you know, you can uh, those are the those are the runes you're going to be looking for. Now, just as a caveat, certain uh, slots don't have certain substats. If I remember right, slot one you never get defense um, percentage. Um, slot three you'll never get attack percentage. Uh, slot five I think you can get all of them. Um, so. Keep that in mind also when you're selecting your, you know, your uh, one three fives. Uh, for support monsters, you know, you're going to be looking for things like HP, defense, resistance, accuracy, um, in all those slots. Um, so, you know, and speed obviously, because the name of this game really should be Summoner Speed War, um, especially once you get up into the upper levels. Um, Speed, I can't tell you how important speed is. Um, so that's the basics on Kairos. Do it. Do it often. Um, you can, you know, level monsters while you're doing Kairos. The XP won't be as good, but at least you'll be getting mana. And you'll be getting, um, you know, the possibility of a good rune drop. Let's see here. What's next? Um, do, 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 do. Um, Guilds. Uh, join a farming guild. Um, you can find them. They're plentiful. Um, mainly because you want the guild shop. Um, usually they'll set like fodder defenses. Everybody farms everybody down at that down at that area. I used to be in one of those a long time ago. Um, you want three things. Number one, you want this four star rainbow mon because they will make it easier for you to six star stuff in the long run. Um, oh, and as a good aside, uh, running Kairos a lot, you're gonna get a lot of Rainbow Mon out of there. So it's much, much easier to six star stuff when you have a ton of Rainbow Mon from Kairos. Um, number two, Ifrits. All three Ifrits are good. Um, Theo can be used Pretty much anywhere in the game where there's not a wind like boss. Um, a Kamamir is good at giants and good at uh, PvP. Giants B10 P in PvP. Um, Tessarion can be used in PvP. Um, and I sometimes use my Tessarion in uh, TOA hard. Uh, though obviously for you guys it'll be TOA normal. Um, he's really great against, you know, anybody who's got a an really annoying, um, passive ability you need to, you need to get turned off. Um, number three would be the, su uh, legendary summoning pieces, um, because they'll pro they can give you a four star that could be game changing 
And trust me, it'll be a four star most likely. You've got like a 93% chance of summoning a four star off of one of these things. Um, and, uh, but, you know, like Orochi was game changing for me, the uh, Win Ninja. Uh, he actually helped me start to be able to complete uh, Giants B10 in under four minutes. Uh, because that's how long it took me originally. Um, so, uh, joining guild, you know, very good thing, especially if it's a little farming guild. Um, and those are the three things you want to concentrate on. Don't worry about your towers. You know, at this at this early on, it's not going to make a huge, huge difference. Um, so, it or sorry, your flags, your guild flags. Um, they're... Uh, they're not really going to super help you when you're farming because hopefully you guys are going up against other farming guilds too, which means they're going to have, you know, fodder defenses. Um, so, uh, next thing would be make sure to check the shop as often as possible. Uh, sometimes you'll find like a good rune, you know, be careful. Don't be careful about buying these flat stats because you don't know what the sub stats are going to be. You don't know how it's going to power up. Um, I personally don't buy anything that's not, you know, at your level, nothing less than a blue, because you're going to be spending a ton of mana uh, when you buy a rune in the shop, uh, and you want to know where those subsets are going to go. Uh, purple would be optimal if you find a legend and it's, you know, within the star range that you're normally getting. Go for it, you know. It might help you out, um, if it's, as long as it's got the correct subsets we were talking about earlier. Um, now, if you want to buy open the rest of the slots here, you can. That's up to you. I would recommend, I can't remember if it's only crystals or you can use crystals and mana, but in any portion of this game where you open up stuff with mana, use that, not crystals. Um, because you can use the crystals for refreshing and probably make more mana anyway. Um, but you, if you're going to plan on using crystals to refresh, I do recommend opening up all of these slots. Um... But it's not a huge thing now because back in the day it used to be really good for getting um, Mystic Scrolls to continuously refresh the magic shop. And then YouTubers published it and then Com2Us nerfed it, which is usually what happens um, whenever we find something in this game that actually makes it a little bit more dealable without spending money. Um, so... I do recommend every hour check this thing because most of the time it's not going to be any good, but every once in a while you'll find that nice rune and just go ahead and grab it real quick. This is also one of the reasons why I do recommend that if at all possible, try and keep as much mana on hand as possible because if you find that legendary, you know, violent rune, it's going to cost you an arm and a leg mana wise, but it's, it's still good to grab anyway, especially if, you know, it's like a, you know, if it's a grade above whatever you're normally, you know, your drops are normally doing. Um, and this is not going to be so much for beginner players, but it might start to affect challenger. It definitely might start to affect fighter players is um, buying up your slots in your main storage uh, is not a bad idea. Again, use mana crystals, not, you know, uh, or use mana, not crystals. Um, and your storage over here, um, buying it up is also not a bad idea because eventually you're going to need, like if you're running Kairos a lot, you may need to start storing uh, Rainbow Mon, um, which is something I wish I had done way back in the day because I used to avoid Kairos. Therefore, I lost out on a lot of Rainbow Mon. I wasted a lot of energy leveling normal three stars and two stars um, when I could have, you know, bam, had something ready to go from Kairos if I just farmed more there and had better runes. Um, now, I don't know if this is 100% true or not, but the crafting building. Uh, when the crafting building becomes accessible to you, don't build it. Supposedly, from what I've heard uh, from other players, is that the moment you build it, that's when uh, crafting materials will start dropping in Kairos. Um... And they take up, you know, drops that could have been a good rune. Um, and really crafting, 
crafting runes is not worth it. You end up spending a lot of mana, um, especially on, you know, like, say, you know, I want to get try and get some violent runes, but, you know, you're not even ready for, you know, you don't have enough uh, crafting materials to get all those. Violent, Despair, all those that are worth a lot of money or a lot of mana, um, they're, like, some of the best ones to craft because if you craft something that's horrible and you sell it, you're not losing as much. But if you're crafting, say, like, Swift or Blade or something like that, and you you spend the, the 50, 50k mana to craft it and it's horrible, you could end up selling it for, like, maybe, you know, 5 to 10k, so you've lost 40k mana right there. Uh, so don't build that. Um, but if somebody wants to confirm that one for me, please leave a comment. Um, I would love to know for sure because I built it right off the bat. And, you know, kind of if that rumor is true, kind of wish I hadn't. Um, so those are the big things for, um, you know, beginning and, challenge, and challenger level players. Uh, also make sure to do all your events um, and make sure to do your daily quests. Um, one of the best ways to do daily quests um, is use your friend monsters and just have them supplement one monster on your team um, and it'll help you it'll help you retain energy and you'll end up with net positive energy with the t with the 10 crystals you get every day um, also make sure to make friends in chat because I did not uh, friend monsters can be very very useful especially when you're leveling if you find a friend monster who can uh, solo a stage, uh, you'll get your monsters will get all of the XP. Uh, their monster will not get any XP. Your monsters get all of the XP, so uh, they are very important for um, leveling monsters in the beginning. So make friends. Um, I usually find that you know you get more flies with honey than sugar or that. <laughs> more flies with honey than vinegar um so you know make sure that you uh be nice to people in chat don't be a troll you'll make more friends that way nobody likes to troll anyway don't be the trolls um so yeah uh buildings for glory points uh buy your double mon each week um work on your energy buildings and then start working on your speed building speed building is expensive but that's why it's better to work on it early um if you're going to build a farmer monster, um, I would recommend check out Reddit, look at the monsters you've got. Um, there are a lot of different types of monsters, especially in the early stages of the game that can farm. Uh, the two I used were Ramagos and Degora um, until I got better farming monsters. Um, remember, they're easy to ruin. Those two especially are easy to ruin from Garen Forest, but you'll probably still get better runes if you're hopefully following the next piece of advice which is do kairos more do kairos as much as possible um the giant will give better rune drops um there's a good chance of getting rainbow mon uh rainbow mon mean that when you're leveling monsters you don't have to sit there and waste energy um you know leveling up fodder monsters um let's see here uh remember in kairos if you're not getting like a 90 to 95 percent success rate drop down a level um, don't waste your energy trying to farm a higher stage when you have you know less than like 85 90 percent completion rate you're just wasting time and energy and you're probably going to get more frustrated um, join a farming guild so that you can get the rainbow the four star rainbow mon effort pieces and legendary pieces um, the shop is, check it once an hour, it's not important for you to open up everything unless you're planning to do crystal refreshes. Um, and these are all the things that I screwed up when I was beginning, especially the Kairos thing. I can't stress that enough um, to do more and more Kairos uh, if you want to advance faster in the game. Um, so, yeah, yes, minions, this is exactly, you know, where I, why I am not the overlord of Summoner's War. So, on that note, go do some more Kairos.